这这这这这真理太奇妙。Well, with the internet becoming more and more prevalent in our lives, online piracy continues to grow as a widespread issue for artists everywhere. But how does it affect the independent artists and business in Melbourne? Here's Scott Reid to tell us more. Melbourne is often described as a city of art, style and culture. But are we a city of pirates? Despite our love for cinema and our thriving music scene, research is showing that up to 4.7 million people are downloading illegally causing $900 million in lost revenue for Aussie content industries. By 2016, those numbers are expected to rise to $8 million and $5 billion respectively. So what does that mean for Melbourne's creative types? Is the issue making an impact on our independent artists and businesses? I'd definitely say it would have in, uh, in some regard. Um, being a, a vinyl only business, uh, it probably hasn't affected as much as say CD stores like a JB Hi-Fi, but um, with people having easy access to say music, which is I guess the most closely related to us here, um, you know, it's, a lot, it's pretty accessible for anyone to go out and get whatever music they want straight away. It's probably one of the reasons that's contributed us to completely about to cut out selling CDs. Although the majority of piracy today is done online, the internet is potentially opening up new avenues for content distribution as well. Web applications like iTunes, Spotify and Steam make it easier for people to get content quicker and easier. And services such as Bandcamp help artists get their music out there without going through a label. But is this enough to get people to stay legal? I think it'll... It's like anything, you know, when you prevent something, particularly piracy started and still predominantly is an underground movement as far as the essence of it, you never stop underground movements. You can cut them, cut them dry, but they always, you know, grow roots in different places or stems. So, yeah, I, I don't see it ever stopping. It always manifests itself in some way or another. So why do we do it? The most common reason given is the price, with many people seeing retail pricing as too much to spend when they could have it for free. Alongside that, though, is demand. In the case of TV and movies, Australian services often can't keep up with the new international releases, and those crucial few weeks are too long for some. But does that give us the right to download? Will piracy ever become a thing of the past? And where can our content makers expect to go from here? It's allowing people to have a greater access to it. Um, in some ways, you know, artists have embraced it from that point of view um, because it means their music gets spread and people that might never have heard it through, you know, the limited angles of promotion, you know, that they could provide um, through their, you know, their budget, for instance, particularly independent artists more so. Um, it definitely allows them to spread their music far and wide. Um, that being said, uh, you know, it's definitely taking money out of um, artists' pockets. You know, with, with the fact that you could download stuff or you get it before it even comes out and you listen to it quickly and you decide whether you like it or not straight away and then you may never listen to it again. So that, that, that's a problem definitely caused by it. Um, and the fact that, yeah, it, it can hurt artists directly, you know. Major label artists, personally, I'm not as concerned about it. It's more the little guys.